Welcome to another quick code chat with Jade Learning where we discuss important changes to the 2014 National Electrical Code. I'll be your host, Wes McMahon, and with us today is David Burt, founder and president of Jade Learning. Uh, today we're going to talk about AFCI protection and changes to that in the new code cycle. Um, first, I'd like to ask David. David, AFCIs are a hot topic. Um, why is AFCI protection really so important? Well, AFCI protection is a lot like the protection that you get with a fuse or a circuit breaker or even a smoke detector. You don't really need it until you need it, and then you really need it. And AFCIs are designed to uh, detect an arcing fault, usually inside a wall uh, in building wiring, and to de-energize the circuit if it sees that arc over time. Um, arcs uh, usually have resistance built in, and the, the current level, the fault current level, is not enough to trip a standard circuit breaker. So AFCIs can sense the arc, even though the current is low, and de-energize the circuit. And that's especially important in older homes, because uh, as wiring ages, it's more likely to have arcs. And uh, we've been installing AFCIs for over 10 years now, and so as those homes age, the wiring's gonna be, gonna have AFCI protection. 10 years. So when was AFCI protection first required in the National Electrical Code? Uh, AFCI was first required in, in the 99 code, um, and it had an effective date when it was going to start to be enforced of January 1st, 2002. But the requirement in the, two, in the 1999 code was that all receptacle outlets in bedrooms had to have AFCI protection. So in addition to enforcement, what was new in the 2002 code cycle? Well, in, in 2002, the requirement was changed. Um, the location was still the same, only in bedrooms, but now it, it took out the word receptacles, so all outlets in a bedroom had to have AFCI protection, and that meant that lighting and even smoke detectors had to be AFCI protected. Now, when I speak to electrical inspectors about AFCI protection, they often reference the 2008 code cycle as a watershed year for AFCI protection. What happened in 2008? Well, the, the big change in 2008 was that uh, the requirements for AFCI were extended beyond the bedroom. So uh, we had to have AFCI protection in the living room, dining room, uh, rec room, family room, pretty much everywhere in the house except for the bathroom and the kitchen and garage and outdoors. Um, so that was the big news. It was it, AFCI in 2008 was required in most locations in a house. Um, the other thing that was introduced in, in 2008 was something called um, branch circuit uh, arc fault circuit protection, and uh, that's basically a receptacle AFCI. Uh, and that was, and the code said that we could use uh, this receptacle type of AFCI instead of a circuit breaker as long as the raceways from the panel board to the receptacle de device was were in a metallic raceway like IMC or uh, EMT or even uh, a metallic cable. So fast forward to 2011, were there any major changes in 2011 for AFCI protection? Yeah, there were. Um, the, big, the big news was that any uh, branch circuit wiring that was modified had to be AFCI protected. So for instance, if, if a customer asked me to install a new outlet in a living room, then I had to install either a, a receptacle type of AFCI or go back to the panel board and put a circuit breaker AFCI. So um, no matter where we, uh, if we modified the branch circuit wiring or even if we just replaced an outlet, we had to come back with AFCI protection. Okay. And that brings us up to date, up to 2014. Uh, the new code is going to be in effect January 1, 2014. What can we expect from the new uh, edition of the code? Well, well they've extended uh, the requirements for AFCI protection into the kitchen and the laundry. So uh, now uh, all outlets in, in the kitchen and laundry are going to have to be AFCI protected. Um, the other big news in 2014 is that um, AFCI devices whether it's an outlet or, or a receptor or a uh, circuit breaker, uh, have to be readily accessible. And readily accessible means that you can reach it easily. You don't have you don't have to have tools to get to it. You don't have to climb on a ladder or climb over anything. 
uh, it has to be readily accessible. So for example, an outlet installed behind a refrigerator in a kitchen where it's not required would not be considered readily accessible. Um, in, in 2014, uh, AFCI protection is also required in dormitories. Uh, and there are a couple of new ways that, that we can provide AFCI protection. Uh, there's uh, a, um, a system combination type AFCI protection and something called a supplemental arc protection circuit breaker. But those aren't available yet, so we'll have to wait and see. Great. Well, there's our basic overview of AFCI protection in uh, the code and the upcoming 2014 code. Um, thank you, David. Um, there's plenty more questions to ask and things to comment on, so please get a hold of us if you have comments or questions on AFCI protection. And stay tuned to jadelearning.com for more quick code chats on additional changes to the 2014 National Electrical Code.